Hmm. Hmm. I seem a little rosy cheeked. You seem to you really do seem to have a very rosy cheeks. You okay there? Let's see. How's see, that? There's, there's, Is that better? That's even freaking weirder. Okay, <laughs> stop that, please. Whoa, okay. And <laughs> stop that! I went too far down. Yeah, you went too far. I do things with what's the word? Full 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 penetration? No wait, that's the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> what are we talking about i'm sorry i'm sorry i think this is the wrong podcast did i wait oh this isn't the porn pot okay oh sorry um, oh that's right yeah yeah, yeah. that's the oh, other oh, one <laughs> that one's over here hold on i think we're gonna do uh lisa frankenstein right now right lisa frankenstein let's do lisa frankenstein as we planned <laughs> yeah I found this on. Uh, I had no, I had no knowledge of this. I just found it on Netflix, and I was like, "Okay, '80s movie looks interesting. '80s vibe." You know what was really weird is is that at, I knew nothing about this film, and then I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, I always try and guess when when it was made, right? And here's the thing, I know it's not an '80s film, right? Because it doesn't have definition problems. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know what I you know what I mean? I mean the the really strange thing is that we can really tell the difference now between even if it was made for TV or if it was made for a movie. Unless it's been super enhanced. Here's the weird thing is to go back and look uh, um YouTube. YouTube has a uh what is it, algorithm that goes through and kind of fixes the 30s, 40s, and 50s black and white films. So you're watching them, and they're flawless. Yeah, and I've it, noticed that. It, it just flips me out because it just happened. It just happened, right? I mean, there was no. They didn't say that they were going to do that. But I remember, I, I remember when when I lived in Washington, that I would be looking at some of these films that came up on YouTube, thinking. Uh, that they were in various stages of decay, right? I mean, really bad, really fun. Some of yeah, them, so the audio was usually the biggest usually, problem. Usually it's the audio. The audio is so bad that you can't understand it. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, all of a sudden, bang, everything that they had looked just about the same, you know? And it looked good. I mean, really, really good. Some of them have been cleaned up so much it, it just... It kind of shocks you, you know? I think Steven Spielberg or somebody has a time machine and they're allowing directors to go back in time and reshoot these movies with the same actors but they're with high-def cameras. Well, yeah, but the real secret <laughs> was how to get them to redirect a scene. <laughs> when yeah. And that's... Right. That's a trick. That's huh. that's that's Apple, right? That's Apple's genius right there. That's what that is. <laughs> that's actually a good idea for a movie. You have like uh, directors that lament certain scenes that they wish they would have done differently or something, and then like you have this time machine that you go back and you can redo that scene. <laughs> but your eighty-year-old self has to go back to talk to your twenty-year-old self and say, "Hey, look, I know what I'm talking about." <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a shizzle. <laughs> For shizzle my nizzle, Scarlet. Shizzle my nizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that yeah. came from. Yeah, that's, you know what? It, too soon? Yeah. It's too soon, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's, at any rate, uh, I can't uh, be done. Ugh, oh my God. Ugh, oh. Anyway. The Me Too version of uh, Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think that through. That sounds really depressing. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, this is a coming... Oh, I'll read the Netflix description because yeah, I that. thought it was you... funny. Okay. A coming of rage love story about a teenager and her crush who happens to be a corpse. After a set of horrific circumstances bring them back to life, bring him back to life, excuse me, the two embark on a journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts. <laughs> Anyway, I like that. Yeah. That was one twist I liked is that the monster was helping find 
body parts. It it was, and <laughs> I have to say that I I I wasn't in love with this film. You know, uh, there was something about it that I really loved the music. But the weird thing about the music is is that they just kind of it was almost like it had a DJ in the background that was just <laughs> doing music, and as soon as it stopped, wherever that music stopped. They put yeah. on another piece of music, and it had nothing to do with what was going on. I think there was some music that was, it sounded like it was original, some of it. But no, yeah. I really liked the opening song. Oh, I recognized a lot of the music. I liked the opening song, though, the way they opened yeah. it. Um, I love that graveyard with the forest. I mean, that was like an amazing graveyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, the, the that's shot. awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I love the look of it. There were, there were a lot of things, and I kind of, I liked her a lot. But this is a film that suffered from um, a lack of a supporting cast that had any oomph to it, you know? Yeah, you really had the two main characters and the Yeah, you had, you the had, you had a couple of main characters, and then everybody else was just honestly below, below average television kind of acting, you know? So, like her mother. Her mother was, oh, I've always hated that one. <laughs> Just well, they, they used all the money on the sets and the two main actors. <laughs> yeah, that, that must be what it was, you know. Um, and, and it and it did have that. I don't know what it is about it. It, it had a, a certain, uh, <laughs> you, you know. I complain about some films being predictable, but so I, I suppose that if a film isn't completely predictable predictable i should cheer for it yeah but i just didn't understand some of it you know as, as it got going along right well what's what's weird is i don't know so what i thought was weird it's probably the things you didn't like about it i liked because i think it was targeting me oh, was <laughs> the, my generation the millennial generation thing? x uh, because a millennial thing? A millennial well in 1988 thing? i would have been like in eighth grade so i would right. have been teenager back then so this right. but this reminds me a lot of like it's almost like Edward Scissorhands and Heather's had a baby, <laughs> and this is what came out. And it, it it's crazy. It also reminds me a little bit of Napoleon Dynamite. I'm um, just the uh, there, humor. There, there, there was an element of um, oh Parker. Uh, no. Uh, oh, any John Hughes movie had yeah, that feel. Yeah, but but not even that. More more of the the. Can't think of uh, I can't think of the name of it. It had Jesse Eisen. Uh, 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 is a Canadian film and it was very cartoonish. You know? Gotcha. Oh yeah, the one where he was a fighter, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of that. What is that? He's a bass player. That's the number one thing. He was a bass player. Wait, what's the actor's name? Uh, uh, <laughs> Sarah. Honest. Michael Sarah. Yes. Okay. Michael, ow, Sarah. Michael, Sarah. C E R A. C E R A. What? Scott Pilgrim saves the world. Oh, you're right. That is it. Scott Pilgrim saves the world. Yep, yep. That's the one. It had a lot of of that element to it. Well, you didn't catch the Hocus Pocus. Uh, what was, what was that character's name? My my, my kids watch Hocus Pocus a, a lot. Uh, Billy, the zombie in Hocus Pocus. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this yeah. guy was channeling that kind of. Way yeah, back. yeah. It, 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 um, but this reminded me. Okay, so one thing I, I was like thinking. Okay, this director has to be an older woman in her fifties. <laughs> her name's Zelda Williams. I looked her up, and she was born in nineteen eighty nine. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> did she watch like every John Hughes movie and and learn how to? It's, it's, that's what I liked about it. Was it reminded me of a lot of stuff that I saw in the eighties and the nineties. And there oh, was yeah, some, yeah. I think there was some decade confusion because there were a couple things that were definitely 1990s, yeah, like yeah, some yeah. of the clothing and stuff. Um, yeah. But anyway, and then I, I liked this movie a lot. I, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, I guess I wasn't expecting it to be any different. So I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> you know, like yeah. there wasn't any surprises except for the ending sucked. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see. I didn't know what they were doing at the ending. I, I, I didn't know where it was going. And I, and I didn't know. You, you know the funny thing about it is you, you figure a resolution that that you know yeah I mean it wasn't it, it was wasn't, a quick resolution it, it was more like everybody just set their cameras down 
and yeah. walked away and, and told the editor, uh, hey, it's all yours, Jack. We're out of money. <laughs> Burn the set down. Yeah, we're out of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. And then she's left with the which is weird. I mean, I just well, quite... what's confusing? Okay, I'm going to edit all this out probably. But <laughs> Yeah, I was okay. going to say you take that one out. But no, it's uh so she he was kind of Right. Duh. What? And, and the thing is is yeah, he, there was, there was like a, uh, there was another <laughs> boyfriend. Yes. That, that yes. Who was, who kind of, didn't they at some point, just the other boyfriend just kind of like, was like, eh. Yeah. Right. Well, you know? they, they also like, literally, well, they kind of. Literally disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like the script went one way. Well, they missed it. They missed it. A, they missed the perfect part. Well, she, she caught her. Oh, that's right. But anyway, so there was a part in that scene that they missed an opportunity to, for some humor. Like, I was thinking like a Mel Brooks type of thing. And they had this giant <laughs> flying in the, it was kind of a silhouette. They yeah. should have had a little, t- <laughs> that would have been a lot better. <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, I don't want to give too much away, but I think they missed I mean, some opportunities the, the, there. The weird thing is, is that you're, you're supposed to have like uh, dark humor, yes. um, but not just mean humor. And and there were elements of this that just got to be just kind of mean for the sake of being mean. I mean, the, the thing is, is in a dark humor situation, uh, the, 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 the people who uh, get killed or eliminated usually totally deserved it, right? Yes, I thought that too, and, that and, this definitely and did not have thing. that. There were people that, there were people that well, were hurt this film. There were a couple people that did deserve it that got it. Right, but you're right. But it not, was pointless the way. But not everybody. Why? There was just a point. There was a pointlessness to it. Justice delivered with a hook. Hmm. Okay, I was letting that sink in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, I, uh, I I thought it looked pretty good. Well, I like the fact that this is like the first like teen comedy romance horror movie that's I've liked in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I didn't. I didn't absolutely. I didn't hate it, hate but it. I. I didn't love it. Right. But I exactly. actually liked it. I liked it a lot, actually. I. I, I didn't. I, I didn't love it. I. I. I have a feeling that you're going to give it a three point two, and I'm going to give it a two point eight. I was actually going to go closer to a four, but three point five. Uh, four. Well. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's because of the. I think it's the nostalgic quality. So, like, if somebody that was older or younger than me may not like it as much, unless they're into like '80s movies and. Edward Scissorhands and, you know. I got the references. I know you got them. And I love Heathers, by the way. That's one of the best movies ever. And this had Heathers qualities. There there were elements. Uh, uh, it was like the uh, horror film version of uh, Scott Pilgrim Saves the World. I think it was kind of the horror version of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> yeah, I can see, the female, I can see that. The female version, I guess. <laughs> but but no matter what, I don't think it was the good version of it. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I enjoyed I'm, watching I'm it. I'm just saying, darn it. I can't I can't get more into it without without destroying it. Um, I I there are there are much worse films out there though. So I should really take my mine up to three. And you can put yours at four, <laughs> and life is good. Well, you know, I'm actually thinking it more about it, like the sets and everything, and the I think. I think Zelda did a great job, actually. So I don't know. She hasn't directed a lot of movies, so I'm actually like, okay, well, maybe she'll. Somebody pointed out something. Something, something pointed out something about Nightmare on Elm Street three that's been kind of bugging me. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know how when when I did when I did Nightmare on Elm Street three, my sister was overlooked uh, overlooked costumes, and and set dressing and i did the effects and and overlooked the locations and the sets right and (laughs) somebody put up a picture of um of nancy uh at the very beginning uh dressed like she was 80 right you know she had this this you know that camel coat and stuff like that i looked at that and i was and goes who? 
who on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 thought that this was a good look? And I was like, yeah. I was, uh, I didn't like that myself either. What they should have realized is that older, that's just not the way to do it. I mean, not to sit down and, and think in, in 1985, think of what your grandmother was wearing that evening <laughs> and saying, hey, granny, can I borrow your outfit? And putting her right on a 21-year-old actress, right? That's where the time machine comes in yeah, once again. Yeah, You go yeah. into so the future, the actress, as an 80-year-old, plays that scene. So, so, <laughs> so when, when the million dollars comes up on my credit card, my wife wonders what I'm spending money on, and I go, well, it's, I'm just trying to fix some early sins. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Wow, yeah. No, I don't know about that. You know, one thing I've always told people is one of the most interesting parts of this business is that you do it, you do it once, and people all over the world recognize that. Yes. And then you have to deal with that twenty years later. <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah. Well. But that's okay. Let's put it this way: you have no choice to be, but to be good with it. <laughs> right. Well, it's like okay, it's like. Creative people always worry about critics and hate crit. I hate critics because they suck. They don't know what the f they're talking about. They tell me I should have done this this way or that this way. But I'm like, you know what? Who gives a f what people say? Because a critic is really just another person who has an opinion. And what do they say about opinions? Yeah. They're assholes. Yeah. And they, what was it? They stink and they're like, <laughs> I can't remember what they are. They, <laughs> I, can't remember what the, I can't remember the phrase. Anyway, the asshole oh, phrase. No. You know what I'm talking about. The, 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 oh, yeah. No, <laughs> Opinions the are like, like assholes. This. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm with it. No. But my point yeah. is, like, I mean, technically, well, we're not really critics, but we talk about movies and sometimes I like things, but I, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you like, but I'm like, it's really your, it's all subjective. So who cares what people say as long as it's what you wanted to create, right? Well, it's, it, it, but it's also like I've always said that, you know, it's, it's, uh, I went to a, a classroom one time that was doing this uh, uh, thing about uh, the hidden. Yes. Uh, hidden has always been very popular uh, in terms of uh, a film school, right? Uh, because it's a very stylistic film, very, uh, and, and I just remember that a couple of times I would come into like a UCLA or USC and talk, um, if you can imagine that. <laughs> Actually, I can. <laughs> and, and, and I would be up there and, and somebody would, and somebody would attribute things to the set. <laughs> you say, See, you know, uh, like, like for instance, you'd be in a group, and you know, one person would uh, say, "Say, you know, I have a question for you, Mister Sean." Uh, during the scene uh, where uh, the creature is is uh, uh, crawling out of so and so's mouth, and the table on the corner is pure white. Uh, what, what, what does? What does the white table stand for? What does it signify? Uh, what does it signify? <laughs> you know, and that's the weird thing about it is that we do things, and the number of <laughs> reasons that we do something when we're on a set, right? It's is it's vast. Right, I mean, yeah. every you just cannot imagine all of the of the including. I mean, I could have been trying to make a statement or. The table that I really wanted out there could have been dropped as it came off the truck. <laughs> it was the only table you could find. Maybe that was it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you really meant the purity of one's soul. Or the one that I really wanted was $5,000 and I had a, a $75 uh, yeah, budget. budget for yeah. it. You know, it, 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 and, the, and the thing is, is I, I just found myself actually getting cornered a couple of times <laughs> in a classroom going, uh, uh, uh. You should have come up with a, like, you know, it's the purity of one's soul. The four legs signify the, the four parts of life. I don't know. I don't know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? But like, come up with some BS and give it to him. <laughs> or shoot myself in the head in front of the classroom. Something like that. You know, something, give them, give them, well, you know, <laughs> I will little, say, little, 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 I've taken a lot of film so classes and 
the teachers, well, the teachers are the worst usually, but they always come up with like, oh, what is the metaphor? What is the symbolism? And sometimes right. well, you, but, you're but, like, but, well, maybe there wasn't really supposed to be a, it's just what you get out of it, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. it, to, because to a certain extent, as, as we make it and, it, and it's and it's passed out to the world in stone, right? You know, it, it's, 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 it has to go out and it's, it's like, I say this all the time, you know, artists should never talk about art. <laughs> they should particularly never talk about their art. You know, I don't want to hear about your art. I don't want to know, know about how you made it. What I want is I want to see it by itself. Yeah. So standing out there and doing something, you know, and, and, and I put it out there, uh, it's kind of up to the critics to make it up as they go along, right? Yeah. Well, it's like music. It's like it's for the individual to decide oh, absolutely. what it means to them. Like a, a song might mean something to me and mean something different for you. <laughs> uh, I've got one for you. If you've noticed this, is that um, as as I've gotten older and I've seen all these groups uh, still on the road, right? Yeah. And, and yet now they're getting to the point to where they're pairing up in really strange combinations. Like, uh, <laughs> like I, I think that the other day I saw a concert that was coming to Nashville that was Lover Boy and Yes together on the stage. <laughs> now, for those of you who always wanted to know what Lover Boy and Yes <laughs> would do together, and you go, hmm. what? Hmm. Well, at least they don't perform together. That'd be weird. <laughs> but that's what i'm saying is, wow is, yeah you know, those are totally totally, weird, different, totally weird, different bands these weird weird combinations because you know they're they we're not putting them together because they're uh within the same range of music we're putting them together because both of the lead singers are 90 and they're still alive <laughs> <laughs> the hand the handicapped accessible ramp was cheaper <laughs> If you had two artists that use it. Yeah, the handicap line is around the block. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I heard one earlier. It was, it was it's, I can't remember. Was it Squeeze and Boy George or something? I don't remember, but it was. Right, right, right. It's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I know. It, it's pretty funny. You know, it's like uh, Gun, Guns and Roses is finally getting together to, <laughs> to do that uh, 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 to, with Joe Jackson. Yeah. You know? <laughs> What was weird is when I lived in I lived in Tennessee like 20 years ago, and I remember 38, 38, what was it, 38, 38 Special and Ario Speedwagon were touring right. together, and I'm like, oh, those guys are way too old. I'm not going to that concert. And like, they're touring again recently, and I'm like, oh, my right. God, it's been 20 years, <laughs> and they're still old. No. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll tell you, there's a band that's going around out here that's been going around forever, and I have a friend that just got the job as being the uh, the lead guitar the, the lead guitarist is for um, – Jim Dandy? Jim Dandy, okay. Jim, it's not one uh, I'm familiar with. Jim Dandy to the rescue. 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 Black Oak, Arkansas. <laughs> that sounds Black old. Black Oak, Arkansas. <laughs> God, are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't, is that like an old like bluegrass band or something? Like no, Black Oak, country? Arkansas was a, was a huge group in the 70s. Hmm. You know, David Lee Roth... Pulled his whole I know David Lee Roth. He pulled his stick off of Jim Dandy. Oh. Jim Dandy was the one who did the back, the 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 arch. Back did he wear and tight all the pants? Rest of that and all those movements and stuff. <laughs> that, that was all Jim Dandy. Did he wear tight pants and and dance around like that, David Lee Roth? He, no, just just think of you know shirtless. Like, <laughs> hopefully he's not shirtless now because he and uh, uh, the guy from Aerosmith, uh, Steven Tyler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they 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 had to quit last week. Really? Yeah, the whole band. Hmm. They had to quit touring. They just quit touring because he can't. Well, he had problems voice, with his voice. Yeah. His voice is gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, with all that screaming, of course it's gone. So, is that are you saying that since all the wonderful decisions you made as a production designer, your brain might be fizzling a little bit too? I <laughs> don't <laughs> know. I saw an opening. I'm sorry. Gosh, well, that's that's right because I I put the butt plug in it. <laughs> wow. See. See. 
See, that's that's you know what? That's a, <laughs> here, wait, wait. Here it comes. Here's your bump hug. Ooh, have to come up with a sound effect for that. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> So anyway, are we done talking about? Let me do it silently for you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I just, I just, I'm just giving you a wonderland. I think a cork would have been more appropriate, like because we could put I, a cork in it. <laughs> I mean, some people can make that sound with their mouth. You know, I, I just wind up just licking my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of uh, this crap. Uh, <sighs> Anyway, the drama of high school. <laughs>